Welcome to the Jeff Knows Inc. Entrepreneurial Podcast with your host, Jeff Lopes. Jeff has over two decades experience as a serial entrepreneur, building brands like KimuraWare from his home basement to a multi-million dollar global brand that has sold over a quarter million pairs of boxing gloves. Jeff's here to educate, guide, and drive you on the process of bringing your ideas and dreams to reality with the inspiring stories from some of the top business minds. Welcome, everyone, to the Jeff Nobes Inc. Entrepreneurial Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes. This past week, I did a post via social media, and I sent a direct message to our followers requesting if anybody had any questions. So I just want to thank everybody that spent the time to submit these questions. It's uh, truly grateful. For those that I don't get to answer today, I'm going to run a few podcasts over the next few months, and I'll try my best to answer as many questions as possible. And for those that do not reach the uh, aired version, I promise you guys, I'm going to directly message you guys back your answers, uh, either email email or I will uh, send you guys a uh, DM uh, via social media where you submitted your question with my answers. I know for the uh, veteran podcasters, 42 submitted questions might not sound like a lot, but I honestly, I was greatly surprised going to week four since I've launched Jeff Knows Inc. And I honestly didn't think I would get this much involvement by our followers so quickly. The quality of the questions I got this week was extraordinary. So I'm randomly going to pick in no particular order a handful of these questions and I'll attempt to answer them the best and honestly I could today. And I honestly just hope everyone listening will find the answers useful in their entrepreneurial journeys. Let's get these questions all started with. Start off with Thomas from Victoria, BC. Thomas asked, how often have you committed mistakes in your business you wish you could go back and change? I guess that's a great question, Thomas. I guess the easiest way to start off this answer is I could guarantee at some point, everyone, whether it's personal or business, in their life, there's a time or a moment that's passed that you wish you could go back and change or redo. But we all know, realistically, that's not going to happen. But when it comes to business ventures, I have to say honestly, no, that's going to be my answer to that is absolutely no, I wouldn't honestly change anything. Did all my ideas and all my plans turn to gold? Absolutely not. But I can honestly say I've never ever allowed my mistakes to determine my next path in my business ventures. You have to just learn from your mistakes, get up, dust your pants, move on to your next venture. So once again, the answer would be absolutely no. All your mistakes are just going to make you stronger as an individual and they're going to make you a better businessman. We're going to get on to our uh, next question. Our next question is from Tammy from Oakville, Ontario, Canada. Tammy asked, how can you tell if somebody is going to be a good entrepreneur? I'm going to give a little history quickly. Uh, There's a little more to this question. Tammy is actually asking this question due to her her husband's contemplating um, starting his own business right now. And I guess there's, I guess a little cold feet happening right there. So Tammy, thank you first off for submitting your question. I have to honestly say there's no defined answer. But I am a strong believer that you can't teach somebody to be an entrepreneur. Either they are or they're not from the get-go. I honestly feel it's either engraved in the fabric of your being or it's not. If somebody were to ask me, are you going to fail? The simple answer is absolutely yes, but just, just think about it this way. Anytime you fail, it's going to make you stronger and more resilient. But now, defying entrepreneur is... It's a little harder for a question to answer. I'll give you a few examples like, think of a 10 year old selling orange juice on his front lawn. That's actually an entrepreneur. Uh, or even, be honest, a drug dealer at the, st- the corner street selling drugs. That is in fact an entrepreneur. Or even an artist painting and selling their paintings at the local market, that's an entrepreneur. A college student that say like, develops some water, see example, water cleansing system, gets a few investors and starts a non for profit to help build water systems in third world countries. That's an entrepreneur. I could go on and on and on what an entrepreneur truly is. Now, Tammy, you and your husband have to sit down and determine what his goals are as an entrepreneur. Is he looking for financial freedom? Is he looking to change the world? Is he looking to solve a problem? And to be honest, sometimes you may have more than one answer to that question, and that's okay. It could be actually a good thing if you have more than one of those answers. You first have to define what you want to achieve 
as an entrepreneur. That's the first thing your husband's gonna have to do. And then once he finds his actual reason, then he's gotta sit down with you and ask himself, is he willing to take all these risks involved to see his dreams through? And that could be so many factors. Example, like quitting his job, the pressure this is possibly put on your relationship as a couple. Is he ready to work probably double, triple the amount of hours he's currently doing at his nine to five comfy job now? There's tons and tons of factors that go into being your own boss. But once you can figure these out and you honestly are not scared to fall on your face in the process, then I honestly will tell you, take the leap of faith and start up your own business. We're going to start off the next question from Robert from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. Robert asked, if I had one thing to say to someone just starting off, what would it be? First, thank you, Robert, for your questions you submitted. Great questions, tough questions, so I absolutely love it. I have two mindsets when it comes to starting off a business for the first time. First, you have to find something you absolutely love and have a passion for, and now you have to try and turn that into a business. Your goals are to create and be part of something, I guess you could say almost bigger than yourself. You have to realize, Robert, no one is ever gonna give you anything on a silver platter. You're gonna have to work extremely hard to achieve your final goals or what you're trying to accomplish in your business ventures. My next mindset is to find a need. Robert, you have to understand some of the most successful entrepreneurs or successful businesses were born on a simple need that somebody found. So if you could literally just find a need and then find the solution to that need and create that into a business, you're going to be very successful. Let's jump on to our next question. Uh, this one comes from Angela from Ottawa, Canada. Angela asks, do you believe in partnerships? Hi, Angela. Thank you uh, for submitting your question. And this is a very tough question. I'm going to start off reaching back in my memory bank and talking a little bit about my grandfather, who was an extraordinary entrepreneur back in Portugal. Um, he was someone, I guess you could say, inspired me to be an entrepreneur. And I, I could honestly truly believe he passed along some of his uh, entrepreneurial DNA into me. He had a saying in Portuguese, and it does sound a lot better in Portuguese. It, sa it says, Pares de Sopra Meias. If I translate that into English, it sounds like pairs are made only for socks. In simple terms, I'm not a fan of partnerships and I honestly do try to avoid them. My issue with partnerships is it goes into two categories. One I have to say is work ethic because it's very hard to find two individuals that have the exact same work ethic. So when you actually put that together into a business, when one individual is putting in more hours, or more ideas, or more sweat equity, whatever you wanna call it, over time that's gonna cause tension. And trust me, that tension will build. The next issue I find is family. When Every time you get partnership, you're always gonna have family getting involved, whether it's a spouse, one of the children that's old enough to work in the business and wants to get involved. That is honestly when the power struggle begins and the issues become very apparent. Could partnerships work, Angela? Yeah, I guess they could work. I just had a conversation the other day with a friend, Joe Ferreira, who is a very successful entrepreneur, and he's got two partners for a little over 15 years already. Until this day, it just works for them. They run a very successful company together. I've had a few personal small businesses with partners and they've never worked out on my side or my end. Not that I've had always bad partners. My my last business venture with partners, the two individuals I became in partnership with for that for that company, uh, till this day were close friends and I consider them great people. I guess with that company, it was just not the right time or the right place for that business to succeed. But for some reason, every time I've, I have had a business that I brought in partners, within a few months, I seem to be finding an exit strategy to get out of that partnership. So going for Forward. personally on my side is going to be a sole ride. I'm going to be the sole driver of this car, this vehicle of my business venture. And so to your initial question, I do not recommend partners. If you could do it on your own, then I would recommend you do it on your own. I'm going to jump to the next question. This one's from Liam from Toronto, Canada. Liam asked, I've been wanting to start my own podcast, but I'm very hesitant on how my peers are going to react. And I'm worried I'm not going to build a following. Do you have any advice? Well, Liam, first, thank you for your question. I'm going to start off by saying you're approaching a goal of yours with a negative almost I'm giving up before even started attitude, which is never a great place to start anything in life. On a personal side, like I'm I'm on week four of my podcast, so 
I was kind of hesitant to even answer this question to start, but do I have thousands of followers already? Absolutely not. Is that going to deter me from continuing to do something I truly feel I could be successful at? Absolutely not. I want you to have a mindset that if you could help just one person or even just pass your knowledge on to that one person, then Liam, you've made a change in this world. And that change could only happen or begin by you using your thoughts and expressing them into words. So Liam, I want you to wake up tomorrow morning, grab a piece of paper and a pen and start planning your steps needed to record your first podcast. If you want, you can message me directly. You have my email, they're in the show notes and any advice, anything I can help you to speed up the process that I've gone through or learned in the last few weeks, I'll be more than glad to uh, share my information with you, buddy. Thanks again for your question. I'm going to jump right into the next question. Uh, This one's from Zach from Windsor. Ontario, Canada. Zach asked, finishing high school, actually I finished high school last year, took the year off to save some money and I have all these business ideas and I want to start my own business but my parents are pushing hard for me to go to university. What should I do? This is a very, very hard question to answer Zach and I'm sure I'm going to ruffle a few feathers with my answers. Let's start off by saying I came from a family that my mom pushed and pushed education and personally I refused to listen As a young boy, I had this like hustle in me, I always did. And from a young age, I I could pretty much tell I wanted to be my own boss. That being said, I'm 43 years old and my mom till this day still nags me to go back to school and get a degree. I'm a strong believer if being an entrepreneur is running through your veins, university or college degree is just going to set you guys back four to five, maybe six years. Put you in a ton of debt that you're going to just be climbing out of working for somebody else. I'm going to shoot off some names to you guys of successful entrepreneurs that have never gone to college or dropped out of college and you let me know if they've made it or not when you think of tv personalities simon cowell is one of the biggest tv personalities in the world right now a lot of people aren't aware that simon dropped out of school to focus on his record label at a very young age um there's michael dell he dropped out of college to pursue his first company which is Dell Computers. And I'd like to think most of us have heard of Dell Computers. And then there's Richard Branson, one of the most famous businessmen in the world. He dropped out of school at 16 years old. Not telling you guys to do that, but I'm saying he dropped out of school at 16 years old and honestly, the rest is history. Another name that some people might not have heard of is David Karp. David, also another high school dropout. He was the creator of Tumblr, which is one of the most used apps in the world. David estimated worth as of 2019 was a little over 200 million teachers are not going to be able to teach you the things that are needed to be a successful entrepreneur they ain't going to teach you how to hustle they're not going to instill in you you have to want it more than your competition they're not going to explain to you you got to wake up earlier than your competition every single day if you want to be successful there's absolutely nothing wrong with a degree and honestly the degree is something that no one could ever take away from you but if you're a true entrepreneur a degree means absolutely nothing in my mind so my advice to you Zach if you have a great idea and you honestly think it's going to work then go for it now school's always going to be there buddy my next question is from Blair from Rochester New York we got an American here that's great his question Blair's question is how do you deal with failure first off Blair thank you for your question I appreciate you listening to our podcast and taking your time to submit your question I'm gonna start off by saying first and foremost better not be scared of failure if you are going into a venture and it's, it's almost like you're gonna guarantee yourself a one-way ticket to failing when you go in with that mindset that I'm gonna fail or I'm already scared you're starting off on this negative foot and it's such an uphill battle from there i want to give you guys an example you're a professional boxer do you ever think a boxer is going to have that mindset and go into a fight and say hey i'm gonna get knocked out tonight if they did they would guaranteed get knocked out or get KO'd at night simple answer is if you're going into a battle and you're hesitant and stiff that overthinking is not going to allow you to relax and and almost flow with the fight so i want you to take that philosophy into your business world blair if you're going to go into a business venture with fear you're going to 
overthink. You're not going to be clear of your path, which to be honest is going to just lead you to bad decisions and mistakes. And with a fear already there, once those mistakes start happening, they're just going to magnify. And before you know it, failure will 100% creep in. And slowly you're going to start giving up on your original, essentially promising dreams or, or vision you had when you first started this path to being your own boss. Our next question is from Andrew from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Andrew's question is, I have personally saved up a good amount of money to start my own business. Do I use it all or do I try to seek out an investor? Hey Andrew, thank you for your question. Great question. As an entrepreneur, I would suggest to start off with your own capital to begin the process. And when I mean your own capital, I do not mean loading your credit cards and paying 20 plus percent interest. This is a dark tunnel you do not want to get yourself into from the get-go of starting your business. And I do not recommend dropping your entire life savings into your business when you first start it. This is where an investor would come into play, whether it's a bank or a personal lender looking for some equity in the company. Until you realize this is actually a great idea, you don't want to drop your life savings into a business at the get-go. You have to almost let the market guide you and tell you whether it's a good or bad idea. And Andrew, once the market tells you if it's a good or bad idea, you have to then go with the flow. If the market's telling you it's a bad idea, you just have to let it go. In podcasts, I did podcasts podcast number two, I talked about when is enough truly enough. If you have a chance, Andrew, if you haven't already, take a listen to that podcast and that might give you at least a little guideline once you're starting this new adventure of how much sweat equity you're going to put into it and how much time you're going to put into it. If it's not working to plan, when do you just let that idea go? One other little quick advice I'd have for you, Andrew, is keep your personal and your business accounts as separate as possible. You don't wanna mix them together when you're doing shopping for your business, for example, using your personal credit card. Try to get a business credit card, try to get a business account, try to keep everything separate from the get-go. It's gonna make your life so much simpler when it comes to tax time, and it's gonna take a ton, a ton of stress off you later on. I'm gonna make this one our last question of the day. Uh, This one's gonna be from Thomas from Cupertino, California, USA. Thomas's question is, what are your thoughts on buying a franchise? Hey Thomas, I just wanna say thank you for your question. I do believe franchises are a great option. I feel for individuals that want to own their own business and are not, they're not really comfortable with building a brand from the ground up. Thomas, if you buy a properly operated franchise from the get-go, the first thing they're gonna do is drop a 250 plus page operations manual on your lap. And a properly operated franchise is gonna give you the training, the support, pretty much everything you need to succeed. Most franchises will take, they're gonna take the legwork off the bat and help you even source out a proper location. And location is key when it comes to operating a successful franchise. But keep in mind, Thomas, you're still going to have to work as hard as most entrepreneurs to be successful, Lattice. The only difference is you're gonna have the guidance and the structure put in place to make a very simple path of success for your business. There are a few negative sides to being a franchise owner. One, the franchisee has so much control over how you market, what products you carry. Pretty much you're stuck in this bubble where everything you do has to be authorized by head office. And the monthly percent of your business you're giving away every month for franchise fees could go a long way to growing your own personal business. I also want to just toss out one more thing. You always hear that question, are franchise owners true entrepreneurs? There are some that'll buy into a franchise as a pure investment. As some of these more popular franchises, honestly, they're complete gold mines. But for the most part, I would consider them not true entrepreneurs as they're not the risk takers willing to build from the ground up. In these cases, the franchisee are the true entrepreneurs. They're the ones that have built this organization from the ground up. That being said, if you still feel franchising is the route you personally want to take, then please, and I mean please, do your due diligence and make sure it's a reputable franchise that has a proper system in place and a proper support in place to make sure you succeed with all the hard work and the money and a lot of money you're going to be putting into this. There's a lot of franchises out there that don't give the support, don't help 
at all. Once you once they got your money, you're pretty much on your own and they'll be knocking on your door in the first of every month to get their royalty checks. So put your work in prior to make sure you're buying into a proper franchise. This is a wrap for today. I just wanted to say this podcast has been by far the most enjoyable one I've recorded so far. Also probably the most challenging one. I, I had to put a lot of thoughts into uh, some of these interesting questions. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, I'm going to try to answer more of these questions throughout the next few weeks uh, through other podcasts. And for those that don't get to air, I will uh, personally email you guys and uh, or DM you guys with the best answers I possibly can to help guide you guys with your business. Also, some exciting new news for Jeff Knows Inc. I've managed to uh, line up five amazing guests that are going to enlighten you, educate you, and most importantly, uh, I'm hoping entertain you guys over the next few weeks. So um, that's pretty exciting news. So until next week, thank you for listening to Jeff Knows Inc. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes, and I hope you guys have enjoyed your time with me today and you've taken something that you could apply to your own business. Like all weeks, all show notes are at the bottom of the podcast. And once again, thank you for everyone that submitted their questions. Thank you for everyone that's listening. Until next week, always remember, always move forward.